What's going on, everyone? I'm back again with the top 100 coasters I've ridden 2023 edition. This is the time of year where everyone makes these kind of lists where they rank uh, their favorite coasters, and I'm going to be doing it as well. I find these videos pretty fun to make, which is why I'm doing this. Uh, I got to ride a lot of new coasters this year. Got to ride four new for 2023 coasters, which is by far the most amount of coasters I've ridden in their opening year. So that was cool. And I also got to re-ride a lot of coasters I've already ridden. So my list has changed a lot. My opinions opinions have changed a lot. So, so this is going to look very different from last year. But without further ado, let's get started. Number 100, we have Hurler at Carowinds. I rode this for the first time this year. I actually barely got to ride it. It opened within the last hour that I was at the park. But I'm definitely glad it did because I think this coaster is very underrated. A lot of people consider this as one of the worst coasters in the world, but I actually found this to be pretty fun. The roughness is still pretty bad, but it's definitely tolerable. And there's actually some really underrated airtime and pacing on this ride. It's nothing that will blow you away or anything. But it's enough to put it on this list. Number 99, we have Motor Coaster, which is at what is formerly my home park of Six Flags Darien Lake. This is definitely a family coaster, but there is the launch, which is pretty forceful. And the rest of the ride really doesn't do a whole lot but in terms of forces, but it is pretty fun because of the motorbike seating. And because of that, it's enough to put it on my top 100. Number 98, we have the only Disney coaster on the list, Rock and Roller Coaster. Similar to a Moto Coaster, the best element is definitely the launch. That first inversion is also pretty intense. Not much else to the ride, but two solid elements are enough to put it in my top 100. Number 97, we have a coaster that I forget I've ridden. This is Hydra Set Casino Pier. Honestly, didn't even set out to ride this really the uh, reason I've ridden this is because I was at the beach and then I just saw it there. So I went over to ride it. I'm definitely glad I did because it's a nice little fun coaster. Has the strongest drop I've experienced on a uh, Eurofighter. Great ejector on that. The loop in the Heartland roll gives some solid hang time. Definitely not much to the ride. It's a pretty short ride overall, but for what it does, it's a pretty fun ride. Number 96, we have another coaster I forget I've ridden. This is Silver Comet at Niagara Amusement Park. When I went, it was Fantasy Island. I haven't ridden this since 2014, so I don't really remember a whole lot, but I do remember it being a smooth ride, and I remember it being a fun ride with some decent airtime, but I definitely need to ride it again to get a better opinion on it. Number 95, we have Val Raven at Cedar Point. A lot of people consider this boring, and I don't think it's the most thrilling ride out there, but it does have a few solid airtime moments. I don't think the vests really take away too much. It's just a fun ride overall, but definitely not that crazy ride, which is why I won't be ranking any higher. Number 94, we have Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa. This kind of suffers the same problem with Val Raven, where it's not that extreme of a ride, but it still is a decently fun ride. The launches are pretty forceful, and there are some solid airtime moments. Other than that, not much forces, but still definitely enjoyed this ride. Number 93, we have the first of the... New for 2023 coasters. This is Big Bear Mountain. Honestly, forget this coaster exists and that I've ridden it. But I have, and it is definitely a really good family coaster. The launches are pretty forceful, just like Cheetah Hunt. Actually, even more forceful than Cheetah Hunt. And I really like how exposed you feel on this ride. The first half really is lackluster, but the second half does... You do kind of haul through the second half, which is really fun. But the layout itself doesn't really have much forces. It's definitely, like I said, definitely feels like a family coaster, but it is a really good family coaster, which is why it's going to be coming at my number 93 spot. Number 92, we have Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. Now, if you know me, you know I'm not a huge b and Hyper fan, but this is one of my favorite b and Hypers. I think most of the layout really doesn't have a whole lot to it, but there is one moment that makes this ride, and that is the five-second floater hill. When you get room, which is really easy, uh, you were just flying out of your seat, for such such a long time really s strong and sustained floater and that is really the main reason that i like this ride and why it makes this list 
Number 91, we have Invertigo at Kings Island. I think this coaster is pretty underrated. It's actually really smooth, and the it's pretty intense, too. The loop going backwards um, feels like it pulls, like, AGs. It's crazy, but it's a pretty short ride and pretty bland ride, which is why it's not ranking any higher, but it is a really intense and underrated coaster. Number 90, we have Comet at Great Escape. This is another wood coaster that I haven't ridden in a really long time, but I do remember it having some pretty sharp moments of airtime and it being a pretty smooth ride as well. So for that, it's going to be making the list, but another coaster I definitely need to ride again to have um, uh, more correct opinions about it. Number 89, we have Shikra at Busch Gardens Tampa. I definitely think this is the most intense out of the dive coasters I've ridden. The airtime isn't quite as good as the other ones. First drop is still good though, and it is a short ride, which is holding its back, holding it back. But for what it is, still a solid ride. Number eighty-eight, we have Fire Chaser Express at Dollywood. This is my favorite family coaster at Dollywood, better than Big Bear Mountain, and it really is just the perfect family coaster in my opinion. It really has everything: solid airtime, it's a uh, solid transitions nice location nice theming the launch is really good the backwards launch is my favorite part of the ride really caught me off guard this time around overall really solid family coaster and it's becoming at my number 88 spot number 87 we have jackrabbit at kennywood this is really a one trick pony ride the rest of the ride really doesn't do much but that double down is an awesome moment of ejector especially with those restraints and that's enough to put it on the list Number 86, we have Tennessee Tornado at Dollywood. This is a coaster that dropped a lot in my rankings after I rewrote it this year. It was nowhere near as intense and fast-paced as I remember it. It also got a little rough, too. However, still has some solid forces, and the drop was uh, excellent as well. So it's still going to be making my top 100. Number 85, we have Verbolton at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. This honestly does not feel like a family coaster at all. The indoor section is super intense, the launches are great, and the drop track has some awesome airtime. The outdoor section really doesn't have much force, which is holding it back a little bit. But the because of the indoor section, is enough to put it at the number 85 spot. Number 84, we have Impulse at Knobles. Even though it's built by Zier, it feels very similar to a Gerstler Eurofighter. The drop really doesn't have much airtime, unfortunately. But there's a lot of intense turns. Honestly, the turns on this ride are more intense than the inversions, which is kind of funny. And that last inversion has some really good hang time, one of the best hang time modes I've experienced. So because of that, it's going to be enough to put it at my number 84 spot, and it's a coaster I do consider pretty underrated. Number 83, we have Dragon Challenge, the Hungarian Horntail side. This is my least favorite invert out of the ones I've done. I think it's a pretty forceful ride and there's not much going on especially after the they got rid of the dueling however it does have a really snappy zero g roll that's definitely the best element of the ride other than that not much to it but it's still a solid and fun ride and number 82 we have the other side of dragon challenge the chinese fireball side do find the side slightly better instead of zero g roll it has these two forceful immelmans with this uh, helix in the middle it's also quite intense but still a pretty bland ride overall, which is not why it's not going to be ranking any higher. Number 81, we have Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket. Didn't ride this when I returned to Florida this year. So it's been since 2017. And this is a very polarizing ride. And I think I fall sort of in the middle on it. Uh, definitely doesn't have the greatest pacing with all those big horses slowing it down and everything. But there is a few elements this ride that are really good, such as the non-averting loop and some of those uh, little airtime hills and turns uh, in the middle of the ride but yeah it's definitely a pretty inconsistent ride uh, overall which is why it's not going to be ranking higher number 80 we have Raven at Holiday World I've ridden this in three separate years and every time I really haven't gotten that amazing out of control ejector filled ride that a lot of people are talking about but I still find it to be a pretty solid ride with some decent airtime and some decent laterals also I find this ride to be uh, a little too short as well, but still worth a ride every time I go to this park. Number 79, we have Steel Force at Dorney. I expected this to be like a B&M Hyper, so I wasn't expecting that much out of it, but it actually turned out to be a really solid ride. 
some really solid floater hills, both in the first half and the second half. And the Helix was uh, pretty fast and just fun overall. And the restraints are amazing, and they allow for a lot of airtime room. So yeah, it was definitely a nice surprise. It's not like too crazy or anything, but it is still a solid ride. Number 78, we have Tantrum at Six Flags Darien Lake. Used to ride this all the time when it was at my home park. And it's a really solid ride for what it is. Really the main thing holding it back is that it is really short. But that final inversion, the inclined loop, is really forceful. The first drop gives some great ejector. And there's a snap in the middle of the ride that provides some great whip. So there's definitely great elements this ride. Just it's a short ride. Number 77, we have Georgia Scorcher at Six Legs Over Georgia. My first stand-up coaster. I am sort of mixed opinions about this ride. There is some intense moments, but it's not a super crazy intense ride or anything. And there's also some fun, some fun transitions as well. And standing up on a coaster, I do think, is more of a good thing than a bad thing. So, overall, still a nice, solid ride. Number 76, we have another coaster I forget I've ridden. This is Icebreaker at SeaWorld Orlando. It's a really weird ride for sure. I uh, definitely don't like the restraints. They're not really painful. They're just kind of awkward. But this ride does have some redeeming qualities. There is a few solid ejector moments and some fun transitions as well. And it, is a, it feels like a pretty decently long ride too. So to me coming at the number 76 spot. Number 75, we have Daredevil Dive at Six Flags Over Georgia. This is just one of the weirdest coasters I've ridden. It is one of the worst lift hills due to the restraints pinning you out of your seat in the lift. The first drop, for some reason, really has barely any airtime, but the first inversion has crazy upside down ejector, and the rest of the ride just has solid positives. The last inversion feels really weird. I don't even know how to explain. It just feels really wonky. But yeah, it's definitely a weird ride, but a good ride as well. Number 74, we have Kentucky Rumbler at Beach Bend. This is the closest coaster to me geographically, but I actually wasn't able to ride this this year after I got the Titan Track. So I'm going to be basing this off 2022, and I definitely want to ride it with the Titan Track because there was this horrible pothole that takes away from the ride that they have now fixed. But if you can put that pothole aside, it, this ride still has the uh, signature GCI elements with the fun little airtime pops and the nice pacing. And it was just a fun ride overall, but that rough patch definitely holds it back a bit. Number 73, we have Gatekeeper at Cedar Point. This is another Cedar Point B&M that a lot of people call forceless and boring. However, I think this ride is pretty fun. There are some pretty intense moments, and I actually have grayed out on this before. But it's just a pure fun ride. Wing coasters are always fun, and that's enough to put it at my number 73 spot. Number 72, we have Fair Night at Hershey Park. This is a ride that I've considered pretty overrated, but it has moved up a little bit after I rewrote it this year. The drop was a lot better than I remembered, and there is some pretty intense moments, but there is some dead spots on this ride, which is why it's not going to be ranking any higher, but I'm definitely glad that this ride was better when I got to re-ride it. Number 71, we have Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags Great Adventure. This is the worst of the two Superman Ult Ultimate Flights I've ridden, but it still is a really solid ride. The pretzel loop is really what makes this ride very intense. The rest of the ride kind of just meanders around, but it is fun being in the flying position. But overall, solid ride, but uh, it definitely has a lot of dead spots, which is why it's not going to be ranking higher. Number 70, we have Nighthawk at Carowinds. This is a pretty weird feeling ride, but it is really intense, especially in the lying position. And it's also pretty rough too, but it didn't bother me that much. And this is a lot more fast-paced than the other Flying Dutchman I've ridden, Firehawk. So, definitely felt very different from that for some reason, but in its own way and in a good way. Number 69, we have a coaster. A lot of you probably thought was going to be higher on this list. And this is Magnum XL 200. Now, don't get me wrong, I still do enjoy the airtime on the ending finale and on that sustain hill uh, right before the turnaround. But uh, this ride's kind of rough, and the restraints really bother me they're really bad and other than those ending hills which I do think are the the airtime strength is kind of overblown I mean like it's ejector but it's not like RMC level or anything but other than the finale in that other hill there really isn't a whole, a whole lot going 
onto the ride, which is why I do consider it overrated. So it's going to be coming in at my number 69 spot. Number 68, we have Medusa, which was actually bizarre when I wrote it at Six Flags Great Adventure. It's a pretty mid-tier floorless. It's decently forceful, but not too crazy. And the Zero-G roll is really good. That is definitely the best element on the ride, in my opinion. So yeah, Medusa going to be coming at my number 68 spot. Number 67, we have Screaming Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis. I think this ride is kind of underrated. Most of the ride doesn't have too crazy of forces, but it is paced really well. And this ride is really bouncy. It's not like rough or anything, but uh, it just kind of bounces around a lot. <laughs> so that's really weird. Kind of fun, honestly, though. Night rides are also really amazing on this coaster. But there is this one drop that has some crazy ejector airtime. But yeah, just a really fun wood coaster. And it's going to be coming at my number 67 spot. Number 66, we have Wild Eagle at Dollywood. This is a lot better than I remember when I rewrote it again this year. The first drop is awesome. It gives some really good butterflies. And the rest of the ride is just really fun and really forceful. So for that reason, it was able to move up a bunch of spots on my list. Number 65, we have another coaster that moved up a lot of spots after rewriting it. And this is going to be Thunder Run at Kentucky Kingdom. This is a lot rougher than I remembered uh, when I first wrote it in 2020. But the forces itself were way better. The pacing is amazing. And the airtime is really amazing sustained ejector on that first little outward part of the ride. It honestly reminds me a lot of Hurler, just like to the extreme. It's even rougher than Hurler, but the forces and the pacing are uh, even better. And I'm definitely glad that this park is one of my home parks so I can ride this for many years to come. Number 64, we have Bat at Kings Island. This coaster is easy to forget about in the stacked Kings Island lineup, but this coaster, in my opinion, is a very underrated ride. It is really amazing pacing. The swinging is great, and it's actually pretty forceful, too. Really, the main thing holding this back is that it is short, but for what it is, it is an amazing ride, in my opinion. Number 63, we have Batman the Ride at Six Flags St. Louis. This is my least favorite of the three Batman clones I've ridden. But it still has some solid force to it, which is why it's going to be coming at my number 63 spot. Number 62, we have Batman the Ride, this one being at Six Flags Over Georgia. This is by far the best paced Batman the Ride I've ridden, but despite that pacing, for some reason, it barely pulls any force apart from the last corkscrew, which is really snappy. But just for the pacing alone, it's becoming at my, coming in at my number 62 spot. Number 61, we have Fire Rock at Kings Island, and I rode this two weeks before it closed, so I'm definitely lucky that I was able to ride it, despite waiting four hours. It was definitely worth it. Uh, the positive Gs in the flying position are a really unique and fun sensation, and that's really what made the ride for me. Number 60, we have another Kings Island coaster. This is going to be Diamondback. Like I said earlier, I'm not a huge B&M Hyper fan, but I think this one was done really well, even though... A floater really isn't my favorite thing on a coaster. This coaster is one of the best coasters for floater. And just getting a lot of room and floating out of those out of your seat on those hills for like eight seconds in a row is just an amazing feeling. And that's why it's going to be coming at my number 60 spot. Number 59, we have Griffin at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. In my opinion, this is far and away the best B&M dive I've ridden. The airtime is really good between those drops and those little ending hills. And the inversions are also really good. Uh, that give they kind of give like some little pops of airtime as you go out of them. So yeah, overall, this ride definitely caught me off guard, and it's a really great coaster in my opinion. Number fifty eight, we have Beast at Kings Island. Now I haven't ridden this since twenty eighteen, since the last time I went to the park in twenty twenty two. It was closed because they were retracking it, but from what I remember, it's an amazing ride. I got one ride in it, and it was at night, so that was great. And I honestly find even the first half to be underrated in terms of forces. Uh, really solid laterals and this nice pop of airtime. And then obviously that helix at the end is really forceful and crazy. Overall, just a great night ride and a great out of control ride as well. So it's going to be coming at the number 58 spot. Number 57, we have American Thunder at Six Flags St. Louis. Pretty mid-tier GCI overall. Definitely has the signature airtime pops and solid pacing. 
and really dynamic layout. Like the a lot of the GCIs, just not quite as forceful and uh, you know aggressive as top tier GCIs, which is why it's not going to be ranking quite as high as those. But still, definitely uh, holds its own uh, at this park and in terms of coasters overall. Number 56, we have Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. This ride definitely has its flaws, has a lot of dead spots, and the pacing is really inconsistent. But this ride definitely has a lot of good moments to like as well. Those hills over the road have some really great sustained airtime, and it has one of the best drops on any wood coaster I've ridden as well. So because of that, it's going to be ranking at my number 56 spot. Number 55, we have my favorite aero coaster of all time, and probably a coaster that many others don't consider their favorite aero, but I love this ride, and it's something I miss about my home park, my former home park. This is Viper at Six Flags Darien Lake. The first drop gives some amazing, amazing pop of ejector. The loop and the bat wing are really forceful, and the corkscrews give some really solid hang time, and the heel at the end of the ride is really forceful, and overall it's just a definitely a way above average aero looper. It's just a surprisingly intense ride, and just a ride I really enjoy, which is why it's me coming in at my number 55 spot. Number 54, we have my favorite Batman the Ride clone I've ridden. This is the one at Six Flags Great Adventure. I haven't ridden this since 2018, but I remember it being a very chaotic, fast-paced ride with the really snappy inversions. Uh, the loops are really intense, and they really whipped you over them. And the corkscrews at the end of the ride were uh, just insanely whippy. So because of that, it is my favorite Batman clone. It's going to be coming in the number 54 spot. Number 53, we have Great Bear at Hershey Park. Uh, I rode this in 2021, and I thought it was the worst invert I've ridden. However, it definitely redeemed itself when I rode it again this year. I think it has really good pacing. Um, the inversions at the beginning are really solid, but the ending inversions are even better. The uh, Zero Zero and Corkscrew are both really snappy. And it's definitely not the best invert, but it is a solid mid-tier invert in my opinion. Number 52 is Dominator at King's Dominion. This is my second favorite floorless overall. Although it's missing a zero zero, which is normally the best moment of a floorless, it, the elements it does have definitely still make this a great ride. Those low to the ground turns are really intense, and those corkscrews at the end are pretty snappy. So overall, I think this coaster is definitely a really solid ride. And number 51 is going to be Superman Ultimate Flight at Six Flags over Georgia. I honestly felt like this one was a lot more fast-paced than the one at Great Adventure, which is why I have it like 20 spots higher in my rankings. Pretzel Loop is as forceful as always, and then the rest of the layout was really fast-paced and fun and gave some surprising positive Gs in the flying position. So, it's, yeah, it's going to be coming at my number 51 spot. And that's going to be end of part one of my video. Part two, which is going to be spots 50 through uh, one, is going to be coming out in the soon in the next few days. So for now, I'll see you all later.